Are they going to have a strike force that goes in with yeah. uh, AK-15s already loaded, ready to shoot uh, some uh, small business person in Iowa? Is the IRS gearing up for war in our country? Is Nancy Pelosi trying to start a nuclear war in Asia? Is there an effort by the national security state to stoke violence in a civil war here at home? Those IRS agents are designed to come after you. They're not designed to come after the billionaires and the big corporations. They're designed to come Come after small businesses and, and working families. They're going to go after the mom and pop. They're going to go after the small business person, the independent contractor, the Uber driver, and they are going to focus so, on basically parts of the country that don't support what the regime is trying to do. Those aren't just some nutty podcast hosts. Those are top prominent Republicans and Donald Trump allies spreading lies and conspiracy theories about the new IRS funding in the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act. There will be no armed tax agents coming after everyday Americans. Officials say most of the new $80 billion in funding will go toward hiring desk workers to enforce existing laws on the highest earners. Let's bring in former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner with his charts. Steve, the IRS long uh, has been a target uh, and it's had an impact. Yeah, that's right, Willie. The, uh, the Republicans in particular have been going after the IRS for quite a while over a couple of reasons. One is they just don't want to pay taxes, so the less of the IRS there is, the fewer taxes perhaps. And the other, of course, was that whole brouhaha during the Obama administration about whether the IRS was targeting right-wing organizations. But let's just take a look at the consequences here on this chart. As you can see, since 2010, there's been a sharp increase in overall government spending. That's the turquoise line. Uh, this is all inflation adjusted, so it was basically keeping track with inflation. Then, of course, you had the huge COVID upsurge. But even without that, the government as a whole was spending along uh, at or above inflation. The darker line is the IRS, and you can see that they have been squeezing the IRS's budget for well more than a decade, adjusted for inflation. It's now down 25 percent. And when you look at the chart on the right, which is the IRS actual workforce, you can see the consequence of that. It, it's, uh, it has gone down by a, uh, on a per capita basis relative to the size of the population of America. It's gone down 45 percent. In other words, they're 45 percent fewer IRS agents for every American than there was a bit more than a decade ago. So they are trying to starve the beast in a nutshell. Yeah, and it's particularly now after the pandemic, people leaving government jobs. Um, you, if you filed for a tax return a couple of months ago, you may not see it till the end of this year or next. They're just understaffed, and that's part of what this hiring is about. Um, your next chart, Steve, talks about audits for the wealthy, which is one of the goals most people agree is a, probably a good idea uh, for the government to check up on the, the wealthiest Americans. Uh, but those rates have plummeted as well. Yep. So as you point, you made the point, processing paperwork has been slowing down and th this money will speed that up. But perhaps equally importantly, as you also just said, there, because of the shortfall of funding, there's been an enormous drop in the number of audits, uh, particularly of wealthy people. And so this chart shows you four different income groups and what's happened to them. If you look at the turquoise group at the top, uh, people who made over $10 million a year, they had a 22 percent, almost a one in four chance of being audited back in 2010. Today, they have less than a 4 percent chance of being audited today. Uh, I'll give you another example from the third line down, which is people who make over a million dollars. Back in 2010, there were 41,000 audits of them. Today, there's 14,000 audits of them. And part of the problem uh, for the IRS has been these audits are very complicated, not surprisingly, and they simply have not had the personnel to do them. And so you've had this dramatic rate, in, a drop in the rate of someone with a lot of money getting audited. Last chart, Steve, is about misreporting. Uh, what are we talking about here and, and the fact that it rises with the income level? Well, well first of all, if you think you only have a 4% chance of getting audited, uh, you presumably are likely to take more chances in terms of the kinds of deductions you claim and how you report your taxes. You can euphemistically call some of this misreporting. You can talk, call it tax avoidance. You can even call it tax evasion. But it also goes up dramatically, dramatically with income. And so you can see all the way over on the right, someone who made $10 million or more on average, and this is using IRS data 
uh, that Larry Summers and a colleague collected and turned into a very good, a very effective uh, study. But um, IRS data shows that if you made over $10 million a year, you on average, quote, misreported, unquote, $1.4 million of your income. If you drop all the, almost all the way down to the left and you take someone who made two hundred to $500,000 a year, they, quote, misreported more like 7.5% of the year. So $9,000 for the person at the bottom, $1.4 million for the person of the top. And that's because uh, more sophisticated people have more ways, frankly, to misreport, to misreport income. Um, it's estimated that the new $80 billion that you referenced will produce $200 billion of tax collections that the IRS other, would not otherwise have gotten. Larry Summers and others believe the actual number is considerably more, so it will really help the federal budget deficit. But more importantly, we need to restore a sense of, of fairness on the part of Americans as to who's paying taxes and who's, who isn't. And this kind of enforcement hopefully will help uh, Americans understand that everybody is going to pay their fair share. Uh, Steve, uh, the point of this new money is really to go after the wealthy uh, taxpayers who are avoiding paying taxes, um, those, those millionaires that you talked about. But is, is there an income cutoff, essentially, that we're looking at? Is, is it, are they really going to focus on um, income earners above a certain number uh, and not so much below a certain number? And if so, what is that number? No, they, they haven't done that, Gene, to the best of my knowledge anyway. Um, when you get down to the lower incomes, a lot of the uh, processing of returns is done automatically. Uh, and so there isn't, an, and so the, they don't uh, need quite as much help to, to deal with their issues. You'll, it'll be processed automatically. You'll get an, a computer generated letter. And if you owe some taxes, you'll pay them. When you get into the upper incomes, and again, not, no particular cutoff, these return, returns can go to hundreds of pages. It takes an enormous amount of manual labor for the IRS to go through them one by one and negotiate with very sophisticated taxpayers. So no, what the IRS does is it uses a variety of things in its computer system to kick out returns where it thinks that things have not been done, uh, shall we say, on the up and up, and it's going to target those, but much more toward the upper end. It's a little bit like the old Willie Sutton joke, you know, why do you rob banks? It's because that's where the money is. Morning, Joe, economic analyst Steve Ratner bringing us the charts on the IRS this morning. Steve, thanks so much. We appreciate it.